Hi there, today we're going to be looking at disability in sport and focus on how different sports have adapted to allow people with disabilities to take part in them. Now a little bit of background information first. Uh, there are four main categories of disabilities that you need to be aware of. Uh, the top two on this list are the more obvious ones and the ones which you may use in your exam or may come up in your exam, but the other two are just to be aware of. Now the first one is obviously physical disabilities. Now this can be somebody, for instance, who's lost a limb or is unable to use parts of their body. There's also the mental disabilities for people with different learning disabilities. Uh, then there's permanent and temporary disabilities as well. Now, many years ago, lots of different governing bodies and sports uh, weren't accessible for people with disabilities. Uh, rules uh, weren't changed or anything like that, uh, and disabled people weren't properly able to take part in these sports uh, in a recognised way. Now, over the years, lots of different governing bodies have actually come up with things uh, like policies for inclusions. Now, these are a set of rules, uh, their uh, strategies and so on to get disabled people involved in playing the sport in adapted ways, but nonetheless playing the sport as best they can. Now, this is the FA's website. And they also have uh, a disability uh, strategy uh, and they have their own uh, pathway and so on uh, where the new versions of the game have been created to allow different people with disabilities to take part in and the FA is fully backing that and fully supporting it and fully pushing it to try and increase uh, the number of disabled athletes involved in, in their football. Now, there are lots of different adaptations that have happened over the years uh, and we're going to focus on a few of them uh, in a moment. Um, the first biggest event that probably takes part for disabled athletes happens every four years, uh, directly after the, the Olympics, and that's the Parallel Olympics, or Paralympics for short. Now, the Paralympics uh, runs in exactly the same way as the normal Olympics. Uh, all different countries come together, uh, normally in the same country uh, as, as the, the first Olympics happens, uh, and together they compete in track events, in field events, archery, football, basketball, and so on. Now, we just need to be aware of how, uh, for instance, the Paralympics, even though disabled athletes come together, they still have to be adapted and different athletes compete against different people. So I'm just going to focus on the athletics side of the Paralympics. Now, in the athletics, it would be unfair, obviously, if a wheelchair runner ran against a blind runner uh, and so on. So what they do is they have different classifications. Um, track event people would get a T and field event people would get an F. Now. To ensure that uh, people are competing against people with similar disabilities, you then get given a number. So for instance, uh, a track person uh, or a track uh, uh, racer uh, would get an 11 to 13 if they had a visual impairment. So all blind runners or blind sprinters will be either T11, T12 or T13. And they would run against other T11, T12, T13 people because it will have visual impairments. Now, another example, if you've got a T for track, uh, and a 51 to 56, this means that you'd be using the wheelchair. Uh, so these track athletes would all race against each other so they'd be all in wheelchairs at the same time to make it a fair and level playing field. Uh, another thing that's been adapted is things like wheelchair basketball. Now this has had its rules adapted. Now pretty much it's exactly the same, the baskets are the same height, uh, the ball is the same size, etc, uh, etc. Et but the only difference is that certain rules such as travelling, such as the contact rule and so on, have had to be adapted a little bit um, because obviously that they're, that they're slightly different. Um, but everything else, like I said, five players on the court, um, the height of the basket is the same, points still count the same, etc, etc, so it still works out the same. Uh, the last one that's been adapted, this set is equipment adapted, is uh, blind football. Now, blind football, uh, all um, athletes in, involved in this, all players, uh, all have blindfolds on to ensure that it's a level playing field again. So people that may be only blind in one eye don't have an advantage of those who are blind in both. Uh, and the ball has a rattle inside it, and that allows uh, you to use your hearing to follow the ball, and you can still play part in the full game. Now, let's have a look at the equipment in a little bit more detail. Now, as you saw in the wheelchair basketball, um, the chairs, as you can see in the picture, have slightly angled in wheels. Now, these wheels allow you to quickly uh, change direction and get more speed. They've also got bars at the front to allow uh, the chairs to bump into each other uh, without hurting the, the, the performer. And they also, if you can have a look at the back, have a little uh, wheel at the back, uh, sort of uh, like a stop. And that allows you, if you, you lean back to take your shot, the chair won't over take backwards and you won't flip out the back of the the chair it sort of stops you from going also as we looked at the footballs we've just talked about that the blind footballs have rattles in and so on and this allows you obviously to hear the ball and to play 
The other thing you need to be aware of is how facilities have adapted. Now these are just your normal leisure centres, uh, your normal gyms, things like that. Now they've had to obviously adapt themselves as well to allow disabled people to take part. Now the first of all is access. Now lots of facilities now have different doors, uh, doorways are made bigger uh, and so on. Uh, they also have things like wheelchair ramps to so allow people with wheelchairs uh, to get into their facilities and obviously encourage people with disabilities to take part in sport as much as possible. In terms of provision, um, Lots of leisure centres now have lifts uh, put inside them, uh, either wheelchair lifts or just normal lifts, and that allows people to get onto different floors uh, so that the whole uh, facility is accessible. Also things like disabled toilets, and there's also lots of uh, leisure centres now run uh, specific clubs for people with disabilities to take part in to try and encourage them to get involved in things like swimming, uh, things like bokia, uh, wheelchair tennis, wheelchair basketball and so on. Uh, the last one obviously is parking. Now, disabled bays are now marked uh, and made closer to the, the front of these uh, facilities. They're wider to allow people to get in and out of their wheelchair. And again, all these things put together allow people with disabilities to get involved in sport.